So you remember that in the morning of Rosh Chodesh, we dive in Shacharit, we read from the Torah, and after that we have Musaf le Rosh Chodesh. So at Musaf le Rosh Chodesh, on the davening of Shmona Yisra, Tfilat Amidah of Shmona Yisra, we concentrate on the right combination of the name for the month that we are going into. So we, this month is the month of Adar. And it comes from Chumash Bereshit, it's written over there from a verse that is called Iro Shurka. Atono, which means it's about the, the, the children of the donkey over here, but the end of each, of each word is the combination for the month of Adar. So the combination of the month of Adar, the name of God, you know, Yud Kei Vav Kei, but the, the combination for the month of Adar is Kuf, Kuf, and you remember, I'm saying Kuf, but you, you know that you have to concentrate on Hey. It's Kuf, Kuf, Yud, Vav, and... Kuf, Kuf, Aleph, Yud. So when you come in the davening to Baruch Atah Hashem. Baruch. Okay, so I don't want to tell you because we, if we understand that we are one family, the, the great, great, great grandmother and great, great grandfather, Adam Arishon and the Chava. It's the first human being and Chava. So it's even ridiculous that we will fight between each other, that we will fight over territory. There even shouldn't be any borders. Do you understand? We are one big family that was that started with Adam and Chava, the first human being and the first woman. So it's ridiculous that we have wars. We have wars because of Chisaron, because of absence, absence of what? So, so uh, the Rambam says about what is the absence? Why do we have? Why, we de- why do we have wickedness in this world? Why do we have wars in this world? It's because of the absence of wisdom. What kind of wisdom? The wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaChokmah Shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu, dear women. The wi- why don't we have the wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Because we do not pay attention to what happens in the world, what God does to His creation. We do not pay attention to the attributes of God. We feel We are strong, only my power did me this this honor, this pleasure, because I work, I have money. No, it's because God gave His blessing. God gave His blessing upon your work so you have the money. Because if you don't have the blessing of Hashem, everything will go in between your fingers. You won't even enjoy the money that you have. But if God let you enjoy it, it's because God blessed the money that you receive. He, he has His own reasons. And another thing, even if people tell you, well, you think that you're better than us, that you do not answer us back, Talia, if you think that you are better than us, they are better human beings than us, maybe you have pride, dear women, just smile, say God, say God bless you, you know, smile, and a good word can break a stone. And one last thing, I asked the rabbi a question, and he answered me. הגמרא טוענת שהוותרן תמיד מנצח כמו כן מלמדת של להיות מהנעלבים ולא מהמעליבים. ככה נצאת דוד עם כל אחד ונמלך למלך על ישראל. אקזקטלי. דיר ווימן. דיר ווימן. דיר ווימן. דיר ווימן. You remember that we spoke about it. Dear women, honestly, it's a practice. It does work. Try it, you'll see it works. It does work. I can tell you it works. It does, it does work. Don't answer back. If you do not answer back. When God wants... He likes your words and he sees that you have a merit in the way that you follow him. He will see that even your enemies will come to your feet. Do you understand this? Because we studied, we all already spoke several times about King David. You remember that I told you that King David, that King David with Shimi ben Gerah, ben Yamini, that Shimi ben Gerah cursed King David and he was a king. He was chosen by Hashem. Shimi ben Gerah knew that. Even though he was relative to Shaul, the king Shaul, and still he cursed him. And when the general of King David told him, I will kill him, this is like he speaks like a dog and I will kill him. He said, do not do that. God sent him to curse me. That's why he became, this is, from him comes Mashiach ben David. 
because he understood the world. It's like changing your perspective over the things that you see in this world. It's we are starting how to change the way we see the world, the way we accept things in the world. Instead of being blind, this is called, even though we see, but we see the physical world instead of the spiritual world, and we think that those things are most important, but they are not. Everything that we come, that all the obstacles that we have in our lives, it's a test from Hashem. God tests us, everything. It's come like, it comes to us as a test and God is testing us. It depends if we will succeed on the test or we will fail the test. But it depends on us because we have the freedom of choice. Yes. So we can choose to shout back and to, to go to the level of that person and all of his energy we received instead of throwing back the energy to him. And just smiling and saying, Baruch Hashem, thank, thank you God. And just wishing for good things for us and all the children of Israel at the same time that we do not answer. Because there's a tube of prosperity open, dear women. So this is what we need to do. Always, you should be from the people who are, get, get hurt, but not the ones that will hurt others, God forbid. Do you understand? This is the essence of, be, of following in Hashem's way, walking in His <laughs> ways. Yes, so you pray to Hashem. When you know that somebody is angry with you, shh, that's what I just said. Birzot Hashem darkei ish, gam oivav yashlim imo. You understand? We, which means when God wants the merit of a person, then even his enemies will make peace with him and come to him. So what do you need to do? To daven to Hashem. Please God, thank you for the test that you gave me. Please help me that this person will do tshuva and won't be angry with me. Mamash lebakesh. You know what? The best thing is hold, to hold the mezuzah and to ask. Mamash, lakzik mezuzah and, and to ask. God, please. Take this away from me, all this energy, this bad energy. Make this person be in peace with me. Live in peace with me. You and you won't believe you see in front of your eyes the miracles of Hashem. Hold on, you have to ask Mezuzah? No, no, you, you can kiss Mezuzah, hold it and ask from Hashem. Yeah. You don't have to do it, but you can do it, because the name of God is in the Mezuzah. Uh -huh. And the name of God is also peace. How do you know that the name of God is Shalom? How do we it's know that? It's very dangerous thing to do what you said now, because you know, I remember I was uh, 18 year old, 17 year old, newly engaged and uh, completely chilonit, not religious, didn't know to run nothing. And the person who hurt me, terribly hurt me, some uh, woman, and I didn't know what to do. I simply, I was so lost, I didn't know what how, I, I didn't answer to her. I put my hand on the mezuzah, I don't know how, just Kinder. naturally, you know, I just, Kinder. I didn't know what to do. I was alone in the room. I had put my hand in the mezuzah. I said, God, just answer this woman. Whatever she's saying, if I deserve, fine for me. Whatever she's cursing on me, it's okay. But if not, just give her back what, whatever she decides to well, try to tell me. Let her keep it with her. No, 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 no. What I said is, God, I want to have shalom bite. I want to have peace. I want uh, peace and quiet. What she want from me? Right. And I put in a hand in a mezuzah, and I said, you know what? Whatever she wants for me, let her have it with herself. What she want from me? I don't know what. I want completely chiloni, little young girl, 17, 18 year old kid. Guess what? 30 years later, word by word, what this woman told me, she experienced in her health. Uh, she told. She told to my newlywed family. I just engaged. She, some, that particular woman, she came and told my mother-in-law that I have a machalat nefila, that I am a sick, that I'm falling and I have uh, seizures and stuff like that to break the, to break the engagement. And I said, you know what, God, you know I don't have nothing like this. Why she say just such a thing on me? What she want from me? 30 years later, that particular woman, she had the seizures and that's a, that type of disease, what she told on me, and that's how she died. Let me She's explain. Suffering, suffering that's Let me explain. It's very scary again. to put hand on a No, 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 listen. Shh, I got, no. It's a good thing to put hand and always when you go out and in the house, put your hand on the mezuzah. And if you want to bless, you can put your hand on the mezuzah. Listen. I did, shh. What I said right now is that when you put your hand and you ask from Hashem that this person will do tshuva. That's a big thing, a big difference. Will do tshuva. 
and בעזרת השם, ברצות השם דרכי איש, גם בבן משלים עמו, ממש לבקש. I can tell you from my experience, ממש, it happens exactly as you wish. I can tell you from my experience, exactly, you will not believe it. I asked that God will make, a, we had a problem with, with someone, okay. and I asked from God, please God, take this away from us, please make peace, make this person to do tshuva. I did not finish to speak at that same week on Friday, this uh, woman knocked on our door, Mamash <laughs> knocked on our door and there was peace. I did not finish, and why do I say that, how do we learn that? We learn that from Rabbi Mir Balanes and Bruya, yeah. because Rabbi Mir Balanes had bullies that were always attacking him and bothering him, so he prayed to God, please take them away, take them to the true world. He wanted to get rid of them. So he, he played, prayed to God, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't suffer anymore. So Buruya, his wife, told him, why do you say that? Instead of that, ask from Hashem that they will do a tshuva, and then all of their mitzvot will be also yours. So he changed his prayers. So he asked from Hashem, please make them do tshuva, and all of the Buddhists did tshuva. They became big scholars in Torah, and all of their mitzvot was his. So this change, it depends, again, this is also... But you know, the, uh, what I want to... Um, Mark, you that are Nishmata Bekanem is what? You are Sadaka. Oh, Sadaka. Sadaka. God bless you. What I have to mark really, that particular woman, when she becomes sick, coincidentally, I was in Israel uh, that period, and she, she, she came to my mother-in-law's house, and she told me, you know, Leah, I will never see you again. I know you're going to go back to New York, and I will never see you because I'm very sick. Most likely until you're going to come back next time, I'm not going to be alive. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you mechila. Wow. I said, oh but my God, asked, why you tell me that? I, everything is okay. She, she remembered. And I, and I didn't tell her nothing. I said, you didn't do nothing to me. Don't worry about it. Everything is okay. It's between mother and daughter, it happens. Don't worry, you didn't, did not, you didn't do nothing back to me, don't worry. She said, I know what I did. And just because I know what you did, even though you don't remember, I want to ask you mechila, and I want to hear, hear from you that you are you, you you for yeah, you're forgiving me. I said, of course I'm forgiving you. You didn't do nothing for me. Don't keep hardening in your heart. Everything is okay, everything is fine. She asked the Mechila, and really, with that particular disease, she passed away. She suffered like two years, and she passed away after that. But she did ask no, Mechila before she... Amen. 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 So, dear women, let's continue. Okay. So, even though people will tell you that, what do you think, that you are better than us? This is the evil inclination causing them to tell you, all that because they want you to open your mouth. This is a test in this world. If you understand that this is a test, you won't, you won't react to, uh, um, to stimulations from other people that you shouldn't react to them. Do you understand? Okay, so let's continue. And so look at... <laughs> so dear women, let's continue. So I told you that the image and likeness is about the actions and the, and the attributes of Hashem, which we have. The attributes are seeds inside us. We just need to make them grow inside us, all the roots to grow to the, to the length, to the width, and to the depth of our souls, to make it grow. This is the fixing we came to fix. It's not only our fixing, it's the whole world's fixing. If the whole world would did this fixing, we will have peace. Mashiach, Messiah will be here, and there won't be any borders. There will be food for everyone if we will understand that we are one big family, family of Hashem. He is our Father in heaven. The the Jewish God, the Jewish God, God Hashem. This is the only God of this world. This is the only true God of this world. And we will understand that we are his children and the Jewish people are his firstborns. And for the Jewish people, God said, this land, the land of Israel, is promised to the three forefathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. This is their land. <coughs> Which means this is a promise from the creator of the world. This is our land. Nobody can take it. But nobody understands because we do not see with the spiritual eyes. We see with the physical eyes. It's like, we, like most of the people on earth are blind. 
because they see the evil inclination, and today the evil inclination is dancing. It, it causes crow, um, fights with, between people, nations, starvation, mm -hmm. and also the greediness causes people to be greedy, it's to have lust. As it's, but I would like to tell you also, the good inclination is working very hard, because look, there are a lot of people, uh, God created the internet, okay? It's not that we created the internet, dear women. Everything that scientists reveal in this world was already in this world from the beginning. But God gives a merit to few scientists to just... Uh, to just uh, 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 through them, 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 through them, them to... Uh, uh, I would, don't, don't like it. Okay, I would like to say that God gave them the merit in order to enlighten us with what he already created in this reveal. world. Mm -hmm. To reveal what is already for that. To reveal what is already in this world, dear women. It's already because even laser was already in this world. You know, the beam of laser was already with a, with a Tolat Shamir, with the one that was called Shamir. She, uh, there was a beam of laser. Everything was in this world. And the internet, I know there's a lot of negative, but also a lot of positive. Because you can study Torah all over the world. It depends on our freedom of choice, dear women. It depends on what we choose to do. It depends if we listen to the evil creation and tell it, please go away from me. Don't bother me right now. And it depends on us, everything, because we came here with a freedom of choice. God, you remember I gave you the lesson about abortion? And then I told you over there, you remember, that God decides about the soul, about everything about the soul. If it will be rich for everything, except for a righteous person or a wicked person. Sadiq or Asha, we choose. We are the ones, because we have the freedom. And why do we have the freedom of choice? Because before, we, we used to be in front of the throne of God. And we used to enjoy His life. But we did not understand totally the essence of God. So God sends us to this world in order that we will receive His mercy with beschut, with a merit. And not because He wants to give us his, with the mercy without working for it. He wants us to have the merit to receive his, his mercy. So He sends us into this world. When we are in the true world, we thank Hashem totally. It's like the story about the king that decided to, uh, to take all of the blind people in his kingdom and to make for them a party for one month. He said, I will take all of the blind people in my kingdom and I will give them food and good beds and, you know, and, and good, uh, and good uh, uh, rooms and I will give them everything they want and uh, make them happy. So he brought all the blind people and every day, once the king passed through, and the servants declared that the king is passing through. They said, thank you. They bowed to the king. They said, we love you. And you know, with all of their hearts, the king said, wow, look at my people. The blind people behave to me like this. And, and they're so grateful to me. I will take now people that can see. And I'm sure that they can see. They will be more grateful. <laughs> So he took the people, he took like a, a thousand people that can see from his kingdom, he chose and he brought them to his kingdom. And those are well, regular, middle class people and, and also low class people. Okay, the, he made them a part, he gave them food as kings on the table, gave them good rooms, beds, everything they wanted, everything they could wish for, they gave him. So then they started to think, wow, but he's also a human being like us. So maybe, should, maybe we should take his place. We'll take him and we will have it. Why do we need him to give it to us? And those are people that can see. And when the king knew about it, that they wanted to go against him, he put all of them in jail. Do you know what I mean? This is the parable and the, uh, and the, the nimshal, which means and the lesson that you can study from this is when we were blind, which means when we were souls under the throne of Hashem, we did not know anything. <coughs> We were souls under the throne of Hashem. We were grateful to Hashem. We did not want to leave it. We did not want to come to this world. And God says to the soul, Abal You have to. Even if you don't want to, I'm going to force you to come to this world. But now that we came to this world, we say, wow, we are strong. We are working. We look well. We can do whatever we want. We can slander people. If I want to climb up on the ladder to come to a higher place socially, so I will ruin this and this and that person because I want to be up there on the ladder. Dear women, 
the, the true thing is that the blind people were the truly the ones that had eyesight. And the ones that had eyesight, physical eyesight, they are blind towards the truth of Hashem. So it's a, exactly the opposite, dear women. So now we understand that what we are going to study in this book is how to change our perspective of life. Mamash, the perspective of life, the way we look at life, how we look at life. We are going to change it in order to work on our attributes. Mamash, attribute by attribute. We're going to study everything. So we say, why is it that he used the, he used the word proper and not must? We are commanded to do. And he uses the word proper. Ramak Zchotot Agenelanu uses the word proper. Why is it proper? He should say we must do it. Dear women, you remember that we studied last lesson the Rambam, Mishneh Torah the Rambam, and here over there said the Ilchot Madah on the commandments of characteristic. The Rambam says over there that a person should not revenge. You are not allowed to revenge. Adam shelo yikom, asur linkom. And he says because, and he says, Ra'uri shelohim it is proper that he won't revenge because he will understand, the one that understands that this world is heaven habalim, that this world is false, what we see in front of us, everything is a lie, is a false, it's not, it's not the truth, it's an optic, optical illusion, it's only tests for us in this world, in order to be under the throne of Hashem when we go to the true world, because the soul is for eternity. Ha, neshamai and sofit. The soul, we just go to a different phase. But the body stays in, this, in the ground. So the soul is for eternity. So Rambam says, uses also the term Ra'ui. And why is it Ra'ui? Because the Rambam says that Ra'ui, it, it does not de-well the, the term of, uh, of must. It adds to this term. Because when you walk in Hashem's way, when we study how to walk in Hashem's way and to fix our characteristics and to grow the seeds of the attributes of Hashem that is in, inside us, when we do that, dear women, it's, we do that because we are commanded and because we are following the ways of Abraham Avinu. And how did Abraham Avinu know the Torah before it was given on Muhammad al Sinai? Because Abraham Avinu observed the world, analytically observed it. Mamash, the Bhina analyti. As observed the, the world analytically and he saw that there's a creator that feeds everyone. And the creator sees that, that the sun will rise in the morning and then it will there will be sunset and then the moon will have light at night. So the creator does as a creator that does everything and he has mercy over all of his creatures. So if he has mercy it means that we have to have mercy. So Abraham Avinu followed the ways of Hashem by analyzing in his in intellect, observed by analyzing in his in, in, in intellect everything that he observed in this world. So this is from the beginning, dear women. From the beginning, this is the way that we need to follow the ways of Hashem. That's why it's proper because proper adds to the word of commanded, uh, to the word of must. It only adds to it that this specific mitzvah, this specific commandment that is walking in his ways is a commandment that was already before Muhammad al-Sinai and it was followed by Avraham Avinu and his sons, that's why God loved him because Avraham Avinu saw the truth instead of the sheker of the lie in this world. He saw through the lie. It's very hard to see through the lie. It's very hard when you have obstacles in life, it's not easy to see the, the truth behind the lie that you have. Because the lie is a person that comes to you, the lie is problems in, in income, the lie is a sickness. All of this is in order to wake us up, in order to repent in front of Hashem and to walk in the right ways of Hashem. So this is the lie, that's why he said proper, proper adds to the commandments. Add to our, adds to our obligation because it adds in the sense of this mitzvah we also follow by the intellect. We see what God's want, God wants from us and then we follow. Do you understand? It's not only the following the commandment, but it's all of, also following by the intellect, by seeing the truth behind the lie. So let's continue. So I, I, I told you that the Rambam also says that the best course of a person to follow in this world is to walk in the middle course, in the middle way, the middle path. And this middle path, Shvil Azab, is the middle way. It's the, the middle course. And a person who follows the middle course is called a Chacham, a wise person. And this is the, the way of God. Zedar Hashem. I, 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 I
uh, the question last week, and maybe you can um, add a little bit more. For each person, a shvidah za'av is different. Uh -huh. uh, and so, but most people take it for, you're too extreme, you're too this, you're too that. No, you, to, you, you cannot compare yourself to others. Mm -hmm. You, you, let, you compare yourself only to yourself, only as an individual, only to yourself, okay? I explain what, what Shvila Zav is. We explained it. You remember I told you there are characteristics, there are extremes of characteristics from both sides. Shvila Zav is in the middle. A person who wants to be a chassid, a righteous person, chassid, a person, a person who wants to be chassid, then he goes to the extremes. But this is only a righteous person. But most of the people go in the middle course. Beshvila Zav. This is the right way. This is the, the way of Hashem, dear women. And I told you, and, and Hashem wants us that we will follow His Keter. And we'll explain it by, when we speak about the measures exactly. When it's fine, the Keter, the crown. Mm -hmm. From the crown of Hashem. From this Sphira. The, the, the first Sphira, which is the crown, Keter. From this Sphira, only kindness comes to this world. I told you, everything is about letters. Everything. You know, so, uh, I was asked by someone. I was asked by a doctor. And he told me, tell me. Does the string theory explain what we have in this world? What? String theory. There's a string theory that mathematicians made it now. Teoria Tachevel. There are several theories. There are several theories that scientists tried and physicists are trying to explain what happens in this world. And I, ex and I tried to explain to him, I said, no, this will, you always there's a theory and then there's elimination of that theory and another new theory comes up. And why? So I told him, I told him, you have to understand, the scientist, the problem is the, is the, with, with a scientific question. This is the true problem. Why? Because we need to ask the right question in order to have the true answer. No, I'm not using the term right answer, but the true answer. Because even if I, I, I ask a false question and I have the right answer for the false question, this is not the truth. You understand the difference between right and true? So we know that I met, I met Baulam to see the truth in this world. The problem is that all of the scientific questions are questions about the material, the physical world. And there's no material without no spiritual, soul without soul inside. Even the table has a soul. There's no material without soul. Mm -hmm. So we can never come to the true answer. I'm not saying the right answer, but the true answer. We can never, because we do not, in the scientific question, the mathematical equations, we do not put the aspect of the, of the, the spiritual aspect inside. And what is the spiritual aspect? So it's, everything starts with the letters. Because before the world was created, the letters were created. And after the letters were created, God wrote the Torah. And after the Torah was written, God looked at the Torah and created the world. This is the order of things. And what is the, the letters? The letters are a combination of energies, of forces from Hashem, from different kinds. Ma? Ken, exactly, like codes. From the, exactly, the, this is the S, but this is it. We are built of letters. Dear women, this is a shin. You see this? You see the shin? Okay, you see the shin over here? <laughs> this is the dalet. You see the dalet? You see, this is the dalet. You see it? We, are, we have lamed over here. This is the lamed. You see the lamed? All of the length. That's why the lamed is the tallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's all of our length. The la we are built out of letters. And everything from the keta, from the crown, comes with letters. All of the blessings come to this world in the Hebrew language, in the holy language, with letters. I already told you. For example, if the word oneg, God says, my, my son deserves pleasure, oneg. Oh, my daughter, she was so good, she deserves pleasure. So the word oneg, the letters, I, nu, gimel, they go down from the kettle to this world. Everything is about letters. They come to this world and they come to this woman. But then if she sinned or did something wrong, Nega. they beat you. It changes to nega, to a sickness, to a problem. You understand? The same letters, they change their place inside the letter. So everything from the crown, it comes good. Everything is kindness and truth from Hashem, from God. The only thing that causes it to change, 
It's our deeds, dear women. It's our freedom of choice, dear women. If we did a bad thing, we create a bad angel. This angel causes the letters to change. We created our own suffering. Do you understand? This is changing the way we look at life. We created our own suffering. It's not a shame. God does not want to punish us. Neither the whole world. He doesn't want to punish. We are the ones that did it to ourselves. We cannot blame anyone. We should be adults, truly, and, get, and, and accept responsibility over our own actions. And not say, this woman did to me, and that man did to me, and this did, and this, and this. No. God sent us a test. We need to stand in front of this test and to succeed in the test. And everything that he does to us is the truth because it's not, from, it's not that he wants to punish us. He wants us to fix ourselves. And any surim lelavon. There's no suffering without a sin. Okay. But, but, but there are things that happen to us that is a carryover from a previous kimpul. Of course, it's a good, it's a good note. Talia said a good note. Dear women, listen very carefully. Not everything. Dear women, sometimes we suffer for for our reincarnation, for our life before. We suffer. We came over here to fix dear women. We came here to fix sins between us and other people. That's why it's mamash, asur We shouldn't answer people. We should not get angry because we came to fix. We want to finish our fixing. God remembers mercy for a thousand generations. If we did fix ourselves, a thousand generations that comes from us will have this merit. Don't you want that? And look how merciful is God. If we did not listen to him, only four generations suffer. And how do they suffer? They receive the same test that the father did not succeed in. The son receives the same. If the father likes to look at women, God will give it the it's same right. angels that he will have the same test. And he will test him to see if he can stand in this test. And he won't follow his father's way. If he follow, God forbid, he will be punished for it. And also his children. The same thing. But he can stop it by fixing himself. By preventing himself of doing a, a bad deed, by this, but this you have to, this we have from the uh, from the unconscious to to wake it up to the conscious because only when we are conscious of these things that I'm telling you now we can change ourselves. Otherwise we cannot change. Otherwise you can. You know. Because otherwise we you cannot. Know, we did not know before, and our action we are completely different. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. It is a big change of the way we look at life. Can you? So you started off by saying that you spoke to a, a mathematician about string theory. Yes. And I wanted to say that I spoke to a religious um, physicist several years ago, and I asked him this question. I said, um, does the soul have mass? Oh, that's a good question. I, like that. Well, I will sure tell you something. Know. There was a, this question. It has, if it has mass or doesn't, I will give you mass or mishkal. But it's a I'm talking about the scientific definition of mass. I know, like Einstein's mass. Let me explain something. At the end of Shem la neshama, yesh mishkal. At the end of the lesson, I will answer. There was a scientist, a doctor. He was Catholic. And he made experiments just about this question. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does the soul have a mass? Oh, I don't want to go into it because I want first to, to finish what I this started is today. This was Jewish. I, I will, there was a scientist, he it, it was a doctor, yeah. and he was Catholic, and he wanted to answer, does the soul have, have a mass? So how can you answer that? You have to weigh people to take their weight before they die and after they die. Mamash, a minute before they die and after they die. So he went to hospitals, everybody thought he was hooker, and you know, it's... It's It's like desecrating God's name. They didn't want to let him do that in hospitals. Then one of the hospitals, don't remember the name, but gave him a permission. So he made a special bed that he can weigh the person, so that he will be on it, and he can weigh him. 
So at the beginning, there were questions. Well, maybe the person has waste. And the moment that he dies, if he has waste, like, you know, a yeah. urine or... Yeah. But uh, mass isn't waste. Wait, wait, mass wait. is something else that, other than waste. Wait, wait, wait. Mass and wait are two different things. In I know, I know, I know. Wait, wait. Uh, so he says, I, don't, I didn't want to go too into, into it right now, but uh, anyway, the experiment was this. He took the people on, on the bed. Alive. Alive, yeah. yes. Mama, those are people that he knew that is, they're going to die. And then he, it was, he sat next to them, you know, he had to be a keeper because he had to see when exactly the moment the soul goes out. And he took measures. He took measures. And he found that there was a small difference because you understand, even if they had a waist, a waist, they still were on the same bed. Okay? But I don't want to go to it. In, 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 I don't want to okay. I don't want to go into it. The waste was also part of the measure. So it's because I can But he found that there was a small difference, a much small difference, between uh, 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 when a person, yes, when a person is still alive and the moment that he passes away. There is a small measure of difference. But I won't go to, into it now. We'll leave it for now because I need, I need to finish this today so I can start a different thing next lesson, okay? A, a few. My friend who, who, who I asked just said to me, does the soul live on after we die? And I, he said yes. And he didn't answer the question. But he's a very good physicist. Shankar, it's not an easy question to answer. It's not an easy question to answer. But okay, let's continue. At the end of the lesson, we can discuss it. Okay, let, let me finish. Dear women, so now the question is, we answered most of the questions for the first page, but we have two more questions. One of them, why does he, why does he use the term machziv tzua when a person with his action, he looks with his organs, he's like the image of God, the likeliness of God, but then with, with the actions, his deeds, he's, he's like lying, but false, falseness, is like falseness of the image of Hashem. And he does not use the word, the term shekel, lies. Because if you are not following the way with your actions, the way of Hashem, it means that you are not doing what you need to do in this world. You are not emulating exactly what God wants you to do in this world. Emulating His attributes in this world. How can we know that a person is emulating the attributes of Hashem by his deeds? Because mm -hmm. as Hashem he sees us, but we cannot see Him, the soul also sees but is not seen. How can we know what kind of a person this person is? By his actions, by his deeds, by the words that he takes out of, out of his mouth. This shows us what kind of person we have in front of us. Okay? The actions. So we say, we ask the question, why did the Rabbi Moshe Kordavel use the term falseness and not the lie? Because, listen, listen, this is a difference in Hebrew, also yeah. maybe in English. The difference is when a person lies, he tells something that he knows from the beginning that it's not true. Okay, this is a lie. The term is that he tells, he says something that he knows it's not true. In his knowledge, he knows it's not. In his conscience, he knows this is a, a false thing. But sometimes a person says, you know, it happens a lot. For example, a daughter tells to her uh, siblings, the small children, on Shabbat, oh, I will take you to the yard today, I will take you to the gina, to the, you know, the, the, ah. huh? the to the park, to the garden, and you can play there, and then she doesn't have the strength, or she reads the ilim, and she says, oh, she doesn't take them. So what do the children say? Yeah. I check out. Yeah. You, <laughs> you are lying. You lied. You said you will take us. You didn't take us. This is falseness, dear women. When a person says that he meant, he thought, at that minute when he said the words, he thought he was going to do it. He, he didn't think that he won't. But then he did not do it. This is mechazeb. This is falseness. Because the Ramak says a human being wants to follow the way of God. He thinks he knows when he comes to this world, God already threatened him and told him, it's a dikah, it's a dikah. The soul is threatened and, and, and they tell her in the true world, be righteous, be righteous. So a person wants to be righteous in this world. But then even though he wanted, God forbid he does things that are not righteous. So then he's lying to God, his creator. Then it's like lying, but this starts from Machziv. Because in the beginning he wanted to follow the ways of God. But then after he, went to, he came to this world, after his birth and he came to this world, 
And maybe he did not, at the beginning, did not know how to follow the ways of God because he, ne he needs to remind himself all the Torah. He needs to remind himself everything that he, and he needs to have the will to fight the evil inclination and the good inclination, will, that to follow the good inclination and to do the will of Hashem. That's why he uses the term of machzib. There's a lot of wisdom behind the terms that he used in the first page. Mamash, a lot, a lot of depth. Mamash kilu omik for the terms that he used in the first page. And then we come to the 13 measures of Micha and the first 13 measures of Mushab. He uses only the 13 measures of Micha Navi the Prophet. Micha the Prophet. And this is a question mark. Why did Rabbi Moshe Kordover use only the 13 measures of Micha and not use the 13 measures of Moshe Rabbeinu? Because Moshe Rabbeinu received it in the Chamisha Chumshei Torah. In Chumash Shmot, the Parashat Kitisa, he receives it. After Ma'amad the Har Sinai. So he re receives the 13 te measures. Hashem Hashem, El Rachum Vechamun, Ner Rachapayim Vrav Chesed Be'emet. He who is merciful, who has uh, patience for us, who follows the truth, that everything is true comes from him. So dear women, and instead he uses the 13 measures of Micha the Prophet. First of all, the Arizal says about his Chutot Hagen Elenu, that the 13 measures of Moshe, that Moshe Rabbeinu received are the 13 measures in order to keep the body alive. This physical body. Why? Because God told Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to kill all the children of Israel. And from you, there will be a new people of the children of Israel. Only you. And look how Moshe Rabbeinu was humble. A person who will hear that from God himself, would be happy that he will be the one that all of the people will go out from, from him, from his seed, from his sperm, be women. And when Shah Ben was so humble, he said, God, a chair with three legs cannot stand, and a chair with one leg can stand? Mm -hmm. You know what he meant, dear yeah, women? A chair, the chair, the children of Israel now, that they have three forefathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, you're going to kill all of them because of their sin. And when my, my, all the children that you're going to, to create from me will have only me to, to, uh, to butcher you? for them, to butcher for them. I think that's a word. What's a word? It's like to ask for them, to ask for them. Only me to do that, he says, it won't stand. He said, God, please forgive them. And God says, Salakti kitbarech, and I forgave them like you said. Look how humble he was. Can you think, when a person climbs the uh, Alpine, the, the, the Alps, the, the highest, the highest uh, the Mountain. mountains in the world, when he, stand at, he stands at the top, what does he see? Mm. He, see the whole, he yeah. sees the whole world in front of him. What kind of, uh, of uh, uh, feeling. feeling does he have at that moment? Wow! I did. I'm, I, can, I'm big. I'm big. Look what I did. Wow! Look, all the world is in my feet. Mamash, in my feet. He sees it. He sees the whole world around of him. Moshe Rabbeinu was standing on the, over there. He was exact. He was speaking with Hashem face to face. You cannot get to the Creator of the world. He can ask whatever he wants for himself, for his ego first. For me, me and me. And he does not do that. He's so humble. He does not do that. Everything for everyone because he, this is the essence of, of being the Ketel. Of being just like emulating the crown. This is the essence of em emulating the crown. This is being part of Hashem. This is like, you, you understand that now I'm walking back and forth, I'm speaking. You have to understand that every minute that I'm now speaking, Hashem is looking at me. And He's looking at every one of us. He's hearing everything. And when we walk, every day, 24 hours a day, whatever we do, we pick a cup, we do something, everything, everything is God's doing. He looks at us, He sees what we do. Everything that we do, if we will go the whole day thinking that God is looking at us, we won't sin. We will be afraid to sin. We will be the, we will have the, you remember the pyramid? We will have the fear of God and we will come to love, the love of God because we will see the truth in this world. We can see through the lies in this world. We won't have any passion to materialistic things in this world. We'll just take everything that we need in order to survive and not more than everything we'll give to charity. 
We will have charity with our mouth. It does not cost us anything. It does not cost money. If, you know, if, if, if the words would have cost money, then we wouldn't slander anyone. <laughs> we would think twice <laughs> if the words would Can't cost money. <laughs> but Chayeva, we will never do that. <laughs> dear women, we will, we will see to it, dear women, that we will never slander anyone. <laughs> but it does not cost money because this is our test. Our test is our mouth. Our test, dear women, is our mouth. If we can stop ourselves from answering a person that is rude to us, this is the test. Because from the mouth, everything starts. The action. It starts with a thinking. Three, there are three stages. We think about something. We take it out of our mouth. Once we took it out of our mouth, it increases because our ears hear, hear it. And it becomes, and, and then the emotions start. And then after we heard what we said now, we start doing actions. We take our body either to do a mitzvah or to sing God forbid. But either here or here. It depends on our freedom of choice. So everything, everything starts with the mouth. Mamash with the mouth. So then it says, Vitimtsena, and the Ramak says at the end of, of, the end of the page, the first page, he says, Well, then he says, it's proper that those 13 attributes of Hashem should be in the person, in that, in, in Adam, in a human, human being. So the question is, why does he use the term should be? Instead that he will should buy himself these measures. But he writes it in this way because he wants us to understand that the essence of having the attribute is by working in this world. We have to work on our measures. Mamash, physically in this world, to work on, and it's not simple, to work on our anger, to work on our jealousy, a wife that is not satisfied with what, with, what, with what her husband brings home. I'll give you a story. We'll finish with a story. I'll give you a story about it. I call the Louis Baisha. Everything depends on the woman. When we have jealousy, we're not satisfied with what God gave us. We see her in the neighbor. She has a new car, you know. And she had, like a month ago, a new car for her son. Maze, what's going on here? And she goes to her husband. Husband, look. She has, you do not work so well. You do not give enough income at home. Ma, what's going on here? And she starts to fight with her husband. I'll give you a story about it. There was a king, <laughs> there was a king that wanted to know what's going on in, the, in his kingdom. And he had two questions. How does a person succeed? He had, a, and who helps him to succeed? So he had a very wise advisor. And the advisor said, you know what, let's, uh, Dress up. Let's dress up as ordinary citizens and let's walk and see what happens. So they dress up as ordinary citizens and they started walking and they came to a place that they were building a building. And they saw three men over there. One was on the fourth floor, other one was, uh, two, uh, two of them were on, on the ground, okay, standing. One was picking a brick. One was picking a brick. And he gave it to another person. The one that was picking the, the brick was a strong, you know, like a bully person. Strong, big, muscles. He was picking the brick and he was giving it to the other person. The other person was so thin that they were afraid that he would drop the, uh, the brick. He was so thin, you know, and mamash. Thin. But they saw that this thin person takes the brick and from the ground, he throws it to the, to the sky, and, and, it, and it comes to the fourth floor, and the person that stands over there picks it up, Mamash, okay, catches it. So they said to them, wow, he's thin, look what he does. So they asked, they came to both of the men, and they asked, tell me, to the strong men, can you also throw it like this? He said, I tried, but it falls, and so they asked him to, to show them, to demonstrate. So he took the brick, and he tried to throw it to, to, this, to this person that is in the fourth floor, on the fourth floor, and he threw it, it came to the second floor and flew and fell down and broke totally. You know, to pieces, it was broken. So uh, the, uh, the king said to, uh, to his advisor, he said, how come this is a thin person? And he throws it to the fourth floor, mamash, from the ground, to the, and the one up there catches it, and this strong person cannot throw it. So his advisor said, listen very carefully, this uh, strong person has a bad wife, 
And this thin person has a good <laughs> wife at home. So the king said, wow, this is nonsense. Well, a wife can chase the strength of a, of a man? He no, says, you, you want to see the truth? He said, yes. The king said, yes. So they went to the manager. And they asked the manager that, that they want, they have something to tell those two people. If he, he can tell them the address where they live. <laughs> so they took the address and they went. They went to the thin person's house. And from outside, they saw that when he came back, back, came back home, at the moment he opened the door, his wife was smiling towards him. She, was, she had a big smile and she said, husband, how are you? How was your job? Please sit down. Once he was sitting down, she br brought a bowl with water. She washed his face and his hands. Mm -hmm. And then she washed his feet and wiped them. And then she gave him food. And they were very poor, dear women. And she gave him food in front of him. And he was sitting and he was blessing Hashem, and he was praying, and he, and he praised, the, praised the name of God. And he was very happy. So they went to the other the, 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 the strong guy, the one that was healthy, you know, that was built good. So they went to his house. From the outside, they already heard the shouts. They were, the wife was shouting at him, and she said, how come your income is so low? Look at our neighbor every day, and you bed, and you couch, every day, and you TV is coming to the house, and we can't afford anything. How come my neighbor has more things than I, and I cannot afford anything? So he said, dear wife, what can I do? This is Hashem's work. This is what I earn, and this is what Hashem wants me to work. Do you want me to steal? I won't steal. I won't sin towards Hashem. And she couldn't stop shouting at him. So, the, the, so um, the advisor of the king told him, you see, you see, I told you this is a good wife and this is a bad wife. This is why they have... He said, no, it, you did not answer my question yet. Because I can understand that, that they, this one is happy and this one is not happy. But I cannot understand why it influences their strength. So I said, I will do an experiment. So the advisor went to the wife that was a good wife. And he told her, listen, how much does your husband earn for one day? So she said, one lira. Lira, you know the lira no, that was okay. in Israel? Okay. One coin for a day. So he said, listen, I need you to come to my house for a month, every day, for half an hour, and you will receive two coins. Uh -huh. So she said, okay. He went to the bad wife, <laughs> the wife that has complaints all the time, and he says, tell me, please, why did you complain about your husband? He said, look at the neighbor, don't you see what I see? You should sit over here and see what happens over there. I don't have anything. My, my husband is so lazy. One coin a day he brings home. So he tells her, you know what? If I want you to behave nicely to your husband. And I want you, when he comes home, to open the door and smile to him. And tell, you, tell him, how are you, my husband? My dearest husband, I'm so happy you came home. And then take a bowl of water and wash his face and his hands with love. And then wash his feet and wipe them and give him food on the table and do not bother him. Only good words. He says, and if you'll behave like this, I'm going to give you this and this amount of money. <laughs> so the woman said, of course. <laughs> of course I'll do that. So the women, the, the woman that was very good to her husband, once she got two coins for half an hour a day, she started to have pride. Uh -huh. Who is my husband? A whole day he works for one coin. I, for half an hour, cleaning the advisor, the advisor's king, half an hour a day receiving two coins. She did not look at him. She did not want to speak to him. Now she had pride. So this person, this, this thin person became so depressed very depressed, he did not sing when he was eating, he did not have the strength even to you know, because <laughs> the emotion, the emotion causes us, causes us strength. The, 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 if we are happy, we can do everything. If we are sad, we can barely go out of bed. Because sadness comes from the evil inclination. Depression comes from the evil inclination. The evil inclination does not want us to pray, does, does not want us to follow the ways Walking in the ways of God, Lalechet bin Rachab does not want us. What does it do? It depresses us. And how does it depress us? By people that are around us. If those two men will understand that everything is from Hashem, and this test is also from Hashem, that caused this test, then they wouldn't have been depressed. 
But okay, let's go to the other woman. The other woman, the husband, thought, God, thank you, thank you. What did you do? I don't know. But my wife, wow, she's so good to me. And he was happy. And the next day they were walking to, they, go, they were going to work, and they can see that they changed places. The thin person was, was giving the, the bricks to the strong person. The strong person, now it was in the fifth floor. He was throwing the brick and it came to the fifth row and he was very good. <laughs> it was, and the thin person could barely even raise his face from the ground. He could not throw. They asked him to try to throw. He threw it to the first floor and it fell back and it became... And it was broken totally. So the advisor asked the, the king, now do you believe me that everything depends on the woman? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, yes, now I believe you. So he went, this advisor, to the, the wife, the wife, the good wife, that, became, that had pride. And he told her, no, I'm school. not going to employ you anymore, <laughs> and I want you to behave nicely to your husband. We'll give you a gift from the king, and I want you to go back to the first behavior that you had. Because the king wants to give you a prize for what you did. He went to the other woman, the bad woman, and he told her, I'm going to give you the prize, and if you continue to behave nicely to your husband, you will receive more price. But this woman couldn't bear it anymore. Because her husband, again, he receives one lira, one coin, for a day. So she, you know, after a few, because she didn't learn the book of Tomer Dvorah. She did not understand how to fix the measures. Yes, it's fixing, it's all about fixing the measures. It's all about walking in the ways of Hashem. Walking in the ways of God, it's not only for the Jewish people, it's also for the non-Jewish people, for all the nations. Because we are all human beings. And in order to... to uh, Wait, I have to find the right word in English. To deserve, to deserve, to deserve, to be called a human being. In order to deserve, otherwise we are just like the animals. Just like we have waste like them, we do everything like them, just that it's exactly the same. There's no difference. Only when we fix ourselves. Otherwise, we do not have the privilege to be called a human being. So the Jewish people need to follow the 613 commandments of Hashem and to fix their attributes and to grow, to see that the attributes grow inside of them. And the non jewish they need to follow the seven commandments of Noah, the sons of Noah, and to see that the attributes of kindness will grow inside them. And then we have a fix into this world and Mashiach is already here. Dear women, I would like to wish all of you that Bezat Hashem Mashiach, Shagia 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 Mashiach,